Jack's all dressed up, ready to go. Things got kind of confusing at the surgery center and I'm going to explain it. Is starting his day with some cocoa crispies. It is early. It's still dark outside. We have to wake up at four. We're leaving soon. I'm really nauseous, but not puking, so it's good. I'm going to get my feeding tube fixed. Um, mm -hmm. But we're not bringing Harlow. Mm -hmm. Main reason she smells really bad. <laughs> really badly but also kind of without patient procedures we generally prefer to leave her at home so she can just chill because um it's easier for Judd to focus on just me if Carla's not there um and she's okay to chill at home so soon we'll be hitting the road about to leave just extremely nauseous but like i said no puking which is good mm, looking forward to Fixing my feeding tube. Judd is grabbing a sweater because it's freezing in the hospital. And with Harlow smelling bad, there's no like rule about how your service dog has to smell. I just think it's nice courtesy to make sure when I bring her in public, she's, you know, up to certain standards, not smelling horrible, groomed, and so she's getting a bath today. Thank you, babe. Mm -hmm. Walker, check. I guess that's all we need today. Other items, check, Judd, check, Jackie, check. Off to the hospital. Ready? Yeah. It's early. It's still dark outside. <laughs> I am checked in. I brought my feed, so as soon as it's fixed, I can hook up, start getting nutrition again, and uh, just waiting to go back to pre-op. Jack's all dressed up, ready to go. Talk to anesthesia. I'm gonna be getting some Zofran and Pepsid through my port to help with some symptoms I'm experiencing. And then my sedation cocktail is gonna be ketamine and Versed and fentanyl, which I don't usually get fentanyl, but he thought it would be a good idea and anesthesia knows best. And then some Benadryl, just because of my, you know, I'm prone to allergy issues, so we're being safe. And I saw my doctor, and we waved. And um, my personal GI is the one who's doing the tube exchange for me. And I have to be sedated because my anatomy is kind of tricky. And so they have to force me, kind of like force the jejunal tubing through and be too uncomfortable if I was awake. Plus, he uses a scope to see what he's doing. So that's why I get sedated. And um, should be going back soon. Next time y'all see me, I will have a new feeding tube. Well, now Beck has come back for surgery, and they're currently, they had a problem with the tube, and she was not the one that she ordered, but a different one, and she'd be able to explain more about that than I would, but she went back there, everything's going good, so she'll be, yeah, next 20, 30 minutes or so, procedure doesn't take terribly long at home, it's like super quick in and out, but anyway, everything's going great. Well, she's sleeping off the uh, anesthesia. <laughs> Oh, she's bad. <laughs> she, oh, she's sleeping off the anesthesia. They didn't have to change the port, or the, I'm sorry, the tube out at all. They were able to unkink it and I guess place it back in there, so that's good. That was not the original plan. The, pl the original plan was to replace it, but um, they didn't have the correct tube. So the tube that she was gonna get wasn't able to vent, which is helps her keep her nausea down from her uh, excessive stomach acid production um, which is awesome that they didn't have to go to that they were able to fix the one they had so that's great great news to hear but she keeps on saying something about me and everything else is unintelligible <laughs> i am more myself I've got lola and i've got all the wristbands and my name one there so i guess there were a few things here and there that came up but 
in the end, I have a functioning feeding tube and I'll update y'all more when we get home. Hey y'all, things got kind of confusing at the surgery center and I'm going to explain it. But just know that at the end of it all, I have a functioning feeding tube and I'm running my nutrition. So we have to special order my GJ button. The hospital doesn't carry it. Some of y'all asked if they can have an extra one on hand to have for me in case I need a quick replacement, but they can't. That's just how the system works. I think it also has to do with the fact that my button costs hundreds and hundreds of dollars, but the button is overnighted to them anyway, so it's always there before my appointment. Unfortunately, the person who ordered my button ordered a G-tube instead of a GJ, so it would end in my stomach only allowing me to vent. It wouldn't allow me to run nutrition to my small intestine, which is really important because we have to skip my stomach due to the gastroparesis. Even more unfortunately, there were no other GJ tubes available at that very moment. They could give me a G tube or they could give me a trans J, which would enter the stoma into my stomach and end in my small intestine. So I would only be able to vent my stomach or run nutrition to my small intestine, but I wouldn't be able to do both. By this point, I was dry heaving, distraught. Judd and my GI were talking to me to try and figure out what choice to make. And it was a hard decision because venting gives me better symptom management, but I obviously need the nutrition. And ultimately we decided to go with the trans J and I was just gonna have to fight through the symptoms of extra nausea, vomiting, bloating, pain, and forego the little amount of oral intake I was able to do because of venting and the symptom management it gave me. So I wasn't overjoyed, but I was getting what I need, nutrition. However, when I woke up, look what I found. It's my GJ button. I was shocked. And then Judd explained to me that my doctor wasn't going to give up without at least trying, and he was able to fix the kink. Now, yes, this tube is more prone to kinking, possibly in the same place, but because of where my stoma is placed, every tube we put in there is very prone to kinking because the jejunal tubing has to do this u-turn to get to the small intestine and because of my anatomy there's no other place to put a stoma in my stomach so it's great for venting not so much for the jejunal tubing this is why i love my doctor he is compassionate and really understands why i need venting and nutrition and he didn't just give up and replace the tube with something else he tried to save it and he totally did. The G port's working perfectly. The J port is working perfectly. I am on my feeds. I'm not at my goal rate and it's probably going to take me a few days to get there and I'm still feeling weak and run down. I'll probably need at least till the end of Friday to feel more like myself, but we are moving in the right direction. I also wanted to talk about anesthesia very quickly. Some of y'all were wondering why it affects people differently. Well, first of all, the most commonly used anesthetic is propofol. It doesn't tend to make people loopy. We use ketamine on me because my body doesn't like propofol at all and ketamine is much safer. Ketamine is known to make people loopy. And you can also respond differently to medications each time you get it. The first time I got ketamine, I was really loopy for about an hour. Second time, didn't really affect me at all. Third time, I was just talking about a cracker. And this fourth time, I was really, out of it. I think the biggest factor is the sedation cocktail itself, what else is in there, because that can vary from procedure to procedure and doctor to doctor, and also just how your body responds to it, because even right now, I'm still affected by the ketamine. I, I don't really know how to explain it. I'm kind of like hyped up, but groggy at the same time, so I think I'm going to go try to take a nap. Well, we both slept a bit. Um, Harlow's obviously full of energy. So Judd's gonna take her to the dog park for a bit um, to burn some of it. Out of the dog park with this beauty over there. And it is actually pretty beautiful outside. A little bit too warm for Jack. She doesn't do well in the heat. And for the haters on the stash, mm, saying I look like porn stash from uh, Orange is the New Black, you're wrong. It's Goose from Top Gun, so get it right or just stop watching then. Well, that's all I can say. <laughs> Hippo has heard a squirrel taunting her, but she's in the completely wrong area for it. It's uh, actually way over there. Eh, she's lost interest. We're off on a quick adventure. Like there's many Christmas trees. <gasps> when are we getting our Christmas tree? Is it tomorrow? We can do it tomorrow? Yeah. Yes. Okay, anyways, we're getting Judd some Chipotle. He deserves it, because right. he's been amazing. And then on the way home, we're stopping at Publix to pick him up a pork chop for dinner. 
that's why we don't have Harlow because we're going in the Publix and she's still smelly. Um, and she went to the dog park now, so she smells even worse. Is she getting a bath tonight? <laughs> she is. Okay. Chad has his burrito. Mm -hmm. Double carnita burrito. Oh. Mm. And I was trying to figure out how to describe what I guess just all of the medicine did to me today and he described it perfectly. It was just jittery, kind of hyped up and that's it's worn off now. I feel like myself um, sometimes restarting feeds after a few days without it. Like last time my feeding tube kinked, I can get this energy burst and then last time I crashed pretty hard. So I'm not going to push myself. Just take it easy and um, getting more and more energy slowly. I think by the end of tomorrow I should be feeling much better. Jack wanted me to show you guys the cows. The moose! Because as you know, her obsession is with cows and or ducks. Judd decided he did not want a pork chop. Because, I don't know why. I'm full. Oh. Well, burrito after that burrito. Burrito. So, I think we're going to bake potatoes for dinner. <laughs> Potato is pretty safe food for me, so... Excited. In its many forms. <laughs> yeah. Mashed potatoes, baked potatoes, um, potatoes. <laughs> Thank you, babe. You're welcome. <laughs> we got a clean hippo. Thanks. You got everything wet. She's happy on this. <laughs> We've got a soggy doggy. She's gonna smell funny until she dries. She's smelling like SeaWorld to farts. <laughs> when she dries, she'll smell good. I am just, I hate the hassle and frustration and how I feel and all that when my tube kinks. And I was actually stressing about like, is it gonna happen again? But then Judd said, it's like out of my control. So try not to stress. You can't change the situation, change your attitude. I like that one, babe. I did the, um, on I was really like they ordered the wrong tube like come on um but that won't happen again hopefully I won't need to get this one exchanged because it kinked but it's okay everything worked out this tube was um, salvaged and it's working well and get nutrition and it was washed and you really smell like I'm not sure what's better worse or before <laughs> like now just knowing you'll smell like apples later. Things are okay now and we're gonna just keep doing the best we can. So we're gonna watch a movie and eat our baked potato. <laughs> and with that, we'll say goodnight and thanks for joining us on our adventure. <laughs>